Okay, engage the brake. Brake, brake. Disengage the brake. Brake. Okay, go up the hill. All right, don't go up the hill. Okay, this morning we're going to go into the brake system for the Model T go-kart. And basically there are a couple elements to it. There's the braking holding device, uh, the boss, I guess you would call that. Uh, the crank arm and the link. And then obviously the drum. That's the three elements to it. Basically what you do is you take off your old piece, replace it with this new crank, and then um, mount this to the frame of the go-kart and then uh, obviously hook everything else up and then slip your wheel on so that's what we're going to be doing today showing you how to put it on one side it's the same for both sides so uh, let's get going okay we're going to put a brake system on this go-kart as you can see there is no brake rubber on this side this is the drive side. <clears throat> we could do it on the other side as well. That's the actual side that we uh, tested it on. And you can see there is a brake rubbing side on that one as well. Um, but what I want to do is test out the fit, first of all, because it's supposed to work on both sides. And one of the things about this, these go-karts is the shaft is shorter on one side than on the other. So uh, we'll, we'll do that. We're going to get the brake fit up today and give her a test run. Okay, one of the first things I realized is that the parts that I had are for the, uh, this side. So we're going to have to do this side anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is take off, obviously, the hub cap. Sometimes they're a little tough to get off. You just get a little screwdriver and pry gently, don't go crazy. See this wheel hasn't ever really been off. I have to smack on it. cotters and when I come back well, the wheel kind of off. Okay so here we are with the wheel. Uh, we're taking it taking the nut off and we're getting ready with the bearing with the we're getting ready to put the brake drum on. 
And so I'm hoping that I can use the same bolts. I don't believe I can. So here is the system. I'm guessing you can't really see it. Can't really see what I'm doing here. Okay. So we're I'm just pulling off the uh, the drum um, off of the test rig so we can install it. Okay. tight. <laughs> okay. Just a little too tight. Tighter than my fingers can do. Okay, there we go. So, we're going to put this on the existing hub. Here. So we're going to put this on the existing hub. Should fit. I want even more precise on this one. All right. Uh, come back I'll have it fit and if it's not fitting you may have to wallow out these holes just a little bit to make it fit better okay so once you get the hub in place then you put on the nuts and uh, we provide some lock nuts which are going to work better than what was on there before unfortunately I don't seem to have them right here here they are underneath so we'll Put the lock nuts in place. Um, one of the problems we were having initially was the hub wasn't lining up and it's because this aluminum hub was some sort of generic hub. This wheel is a generic wheel that must have been manufactured at one time because it had a four bolt hole pattern and someone had entered a six bolt pattern into it and when they did so they weren't a hundred percent square so they came off at an angle but we got it all fit up and uh, we're good to go so I'll tighten these up uh, looks like I'm short a lock nut so I'll go get one and we'll be back okay so we're going to tighten these down Tighten these down. And then we're going to do a little test fit again. vibration on these go-karts so I just want to make sure that these don't loop this doesn't loosen up oh okay. so we're going to test fit it onto the frame 
axle. Okay, we're gonna go on that. No, got the wheel, got the old brake in the way. Okay, perfect. That's what it should sound like. No interference, nothing. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take off this brake part, the part that holds the brakes on. Take the hub off. And we're gonna take off this brake part right here. And I believe that's a 7 16th as well. Or it might be some weird odd number. Yeah, you can use a 7 16th on the top of it. And it just pops off like that. Then we'll take our brake part, our crank, and we stick that on to the, it should just go right on. The end of this appears to have a burr, burr and beat up a little bit, so I'm just going to hit it with a file so it fits on better. When we come back, all of it fit. Okay, so now what we're doing, we've got the ground that part off, and we've got it so that it's semi better. <laughs> it was just in. Oh. It should be in the upright position when it's positioned. Okay, so we're going to take this bolt off and we're going to start positioning this brake piece. Okay, this is the beauty of the system that we have. Uh, basically, because this bar was in the way, it forced us to, to put the thing on top, which is fine because this uh, link is adjustable and so I'm going to adjust it out farther as far as it can go probably I think we're as far as this one can go but I can see if there's more adjustment on this one so we'll pull this apart. You can see it's adjustable. And so it's at the end of the link on this one, but this one isn't. And I'm just going to hit it with a file and then we'll be back. They couldn't see you adjusting it. I got to hit this other one with a file so it can pull out even more. Oh, I could just keep doing that. But no, <laughs> that's not doing it. I'll be back. Okay, so now that we have it positioned. Uh, this actually is an easier way of doing it, be being on top, because all you have to do is throw your drill right into the hole. To start it. So there it is. I'm going to pull it because I don't want to wallow out the uh, brake part. So we'll just pull this off. We've marked it sufficiently. Ow. So there's where it started. And we'll finish drilling it through. Yes, you need a little force because that steel is harder than the one. And as you can see, you will need clearance. So I use a right angle drill to do it. through to hold it in position so I can mark it off 
And the nice thing about this is it has a little catch on there. So it should be squared up with body work. But I think we this looks a little bent. So I'm going to refit it. I know it's not, I'm not a real fan of refitting everything all the time. But, you know, this is going to be permanent. So I want to make sure that we have... Okay, so we're tightening this. And what I'm looking at here is that this is square with this. Because I... The side of it, I mean, you can get this thing adjusted any way you want. And you can see it can wander anywhere. So what we're looking here to do is make this square with that. And you'll see in a minute why that's important. So I will tighten it, but what I'm looking for is visually squareness or flatness, same cleanness as the other one. So I'll lock that down, put this in position, put this in position, and put my other one in position where my bolt go. Here it is. I got the short bolt up top, I need the long bolt up top. through the brake band. Okay. And okay. Test it one more time. Try to test the brake again and see if it works more smoothly. Yeah, it seems to be a little far up, so I'm gonna loosen that. Bring her down to the frame like I had it initially. Test the brake. No, it's good enough. Okay. No, it's gonna work. Okay, so get that. So basically, I did go up against the frame. I, I squared it up there. I, what we're fighting here is adjustment. I was at the very maximum adjustment. This particular part right here is actually designed to be underneath for best adjustment. So it's just the way it is. So I, uh, I'm happy with the way it's positioned. I'm pull this off, drill this part. So we'll basically take this. And then we can leave it in position. tight because this is uh, we don't need this vibrating off okay so pretty much we have everything in position we need to lock this one down more we have that adjusted. We'll get that crank down on both sides. Don't overdo it. I probably, I don't know what kind of foot pounds I'd have to get a torque wrench, but you don't want to overdo it because you might break the part too. But it will give you ample whatever we need to get this to work. So our next thing is to tighten all these up. 
and these require 9 sixteenths wrenches to get them to work. So we'll tighten those up and get the rim back in position, do some cleanup, you know, get rid of these flakes, and uh, we should be good to go. So when we come back, we'll have this stuff tightened up, and then I'll apply the wheel. Okay, so we're tightening down the brake band and so on. We don't want to go nuts and get it so tight that I can't turn it. So we want to get it pretty much go tight and then keep it loose enough where you can spin it by hand. That's for all these linkages. You don't want to go crazy tightening this because it's just a, a casting. All it just needs to be tight and the bolt should be able to spin by hand. Okay, same with the one up top. The bolt should be able to spin freely, get it to the where it's tight-ish. And then back off so you can spin it. You should be able to spin the bolt by hand. Okay. So then we're going to put the, uh, I mean you can lube these if you want, but these are aluminum, there's really nothing going to corrode. Okay, so we put the brake hub on, holding the uh, drum, I mean. Okay. Should I test the brake to see if it's bare now? Yep. Okay. So, watch. So wheel spinning. Now it's breaking. And it breaks. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put on our cotter. Put it in position. Yeah, hold on a minute. Let go of the brake. <laughs> yeah, it works so well I can't get the cotter in. Okay. Okay, might be hitting the bearing. No, there shouldn't be anything hitting. It should be the same same clearance that we had before, Clarence. Okay, so we need just a little kind of hammer kind of thing. I actually need a hammer. Thought I had Don't like using these for hammers. Okay. So we're gonna bend this over, split it first with the screwdriver, like that, and then bend them over. This. And put on our hub cap. Voila! Break. So we're going to put this thing out. We're going to take it for a test drive. See what happens. I'm going to get myself in this thing. Okay. Here we go. So 
Would you like a push? Okay. okay. We're looking at this wheel. That's what we want to look at. Keep the focus on that wheel because that's what's important. Okay, so what we're testing is the brakes. It works, right? Yep. Go down, go down. Okay, I can probably adjust it a little bit tighter. Okay, say you've got the go-kart put together and you want to adjust the brakes. I would not advise playing with the crank first thing. I would adjust the link if you can. So basically you should be able to get it to the link from through the wheel. You just loosen it and uh, try to find the equivalent metric because that's what I'm trying to do. I don't have one. 12 maybe. That's not it. 13 isn't working in 10. 10 should work. Surprise it doesn't. Alright, we have to get another 716 hand wrench. I'll be back. Okay, um, the other one might be a little harder to get at. You'll, you'll need to use two wrenches and I can understand where you'd be like, I don't want to do it this way, but you're only going to have to adjust it once, not a hundred million times. <laughs> I do not know what's going on here. Oh, well, I'm not even hitting the wrench. That's what's going on. Okay, so you loosen up this link. Oh. Get it. Don't hit the camera. Oh. Should be able to get to the inside with a regular ratchet. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is adjust it. We're trying to adjust it so that um, we can tighten it. That's all we're doing. Uh, cut. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is to get more bite out of our brake. So I'm pushing this link in a little bit and we're going to tighten it. So you can access one bolt through the, uh, the wheel well. So what I'm going to do here is get it semi tight and we'll back off just a hair, push it into where we want it to be, about right there. And then we'll tighten it. Now go pull on the brake. Mm -hmm. Just leave it on. Okay. Hold on, let me tighten this Just a little bit. Okay, give her a pull. Actually, just pressed. Pressed. Did it go all the way down? Yes. It's all the way down right now. Okay, let up. I just did okay, it. Okay, look. Let go of the brake. Let go of the brake. I did let go. Okay, turn on the brake when I tell you. Okay, so we're going to roll it and brake all the way. Okay. Brake all the way. Okay, so I can turn it even though he's braking all the way. So we can adjust even more if we want. want it to be is like not even turning that would be the most so back this off push it in even more put our 
wrench on there. Make sure we're getting a rut hoarding. That's decent. Yep, we are recording. Well, yeah, they, they can actually see what's going on. They couldn't see what was really going on before. I tried to get as much picture as they could. All right, like give, hand give it a try. Give it a try. Now. Yeah, you can't really see anything. Okay, just give it a try. Is it in the screen about right here? Yes. Okay, well, that's all that matters. Give it a try. Okay, I'm going to unzoom. Okay. And Brakes. Whoa! I can't even push. Yeah, I can't even turn it. And so now we've got it adjusted to where it will lock up. Now push it. Okay, let go. Okay, I'm going to give it a push forward and then I'll tell you to put the brakes on. Okay. Put the brakes on about right here, okay? Okay. One, two, three. There. So now we got them adjusted pretty tight. There we are. That's the uh, brake adjustment. Okay, engage the brake. 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 Disengage the brake. Don't go up the hill.